In order to get a nice photographic high resolution texture like this ready for actual texture projection, we need to eliminate from this the big shadow detail and the big highlight detail as much as possible. And this is so that we don't inadvertently bake into our texture shadow and highlight details that are not, you know, actually specific to what the lighting in the scene is. How do we go about doing that? It's not tremendously difficult, um, but it does take a little bit of patience. And what we want to do, just using an image like this, is to start with uh, removing the shadows, let's just say. That's probably the easiest way to get started. And so I get my background there. I'm just going to go ahead and click on that. I'm going to hit Control J to duplicate it, and we're going to work on a duplicate of it. Um, in fact, actually, I'm going to do this twice, but I'm going to turn the duplicate um, at the top off. We'll call this shadow removal for this layer. The other one we'll, we'll eventually call uh, highlight removal. Okay. Um, so what we need to do in this case is to convert our layer to a smart object. So we can right click on the layer, click on convert to smart object. And one of the quick ways that we can start to attend to the shadows is if we use camera raw. So we can go to filter and camera raw filter. And this will open up um, the camera raw uh, window, basically, which is a little bit too big for my screen at the moment. So let's fit that in there. <clears throat> And within this window here, uh, what we'll do is we'll take our shadows and we're just going to pull them up to 100, you know, just as much as we can. You'll see that it's making an improvement, but it's not perfect yet. That's okay. We'll click OK. All right, so if we take a look at the before and after, we can see what's going on. And this is going to be very dependent on, on the image in question. You know, maybe one pass is enough to work for image you work on maybe not in this case it's not um, so we could do that over and over again until we get rid of the shadows as much as possible in this case I'm just going to hold down alt and click on the camera raw filter and just drag it back up to the smart filters and if I do it correctly sometimes it works there we go um, it will just create a duplicate of what I'd already made before and still doesn't look quite enough so what I found with this particular Im image is I needed to do it about four times. And you can see that it's really starting to pull up those uh, those shadows that are in there. But it's also, uh, you know, really changing the overall look of uh, the rest of the image as well. So we don't want this to be applied everywhere. And what's good is that it comes with its own mask. So I would start out by filling that mask with black. This way I can start to paint in uh, using one of my just basic brushes. And I'd start in the darkest areas and try to paint them up. And uh, in this case here, you know, a low opacity brush, um, kind of a limited area. And I just try to paint in to just the areas mostly that are already very dark. Okay. And so, I mean, I can paint broader strokes than that if I want, but really I'm just trying to bring up um, the dark patches. And so, you know, on something like this, it can take a little while because you're going to be painting through um, some smaller areas. And it's not going to be a perfect thing, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be. Because even if I were to go in and use like a big brush like that, you can see it's not having a tremendously bad effect overall. But I don't want to lose all of my contrast. I want to uh, preserve some of it, but I, I do really want to get rid of um, like the super dark shadows at least. And I'll show you an example of this because I've already done it. Um, in, uh, in a version of this file, but basically I would go through and I would do all that um, and I'd pull this up and if I were to look at uh, the version where it's, it's already all done, we get something that looks like this. Okay. Um, so that's, you know, this is the before and after. Before and after. All right, so the next step in that case, this, this is not as good as the previous example, but the next step in that case would be going to our highlight removal. And it's a very similar process. We will make this a smart object and we're gonna go into our um, camera raw filter. And this time 
um, as we do is we're going to take our highlights and we're going to pull them down. We want to get especially these top highlights up here. We want to get rid of those. And um, in this case, I found that it took about four times doing this as well in order to get it to uh, to work properly. So I'm just repeating the same command essentially over and over again, and we will repeat the same process ultimately. Now it looks really dark. Okay, go back to your smart filters and then fill that in with black. And now we can come in here and sort of paint in where we want some more of that uh, detail to, you know, to be pulled out. And especially there. I'm just working kind of a bit of a broad brush. Sometimes it can be useful to be working back a little bit. Um, you see, you start getting some of these uh, more noticeable uh, edges to what I was just doing there. So maybe I want to um, use a bit of a bigger brush and, of course, make sure that it has full fall off on it. The hardness there is, was a little bit too much. Um, so I'll pull this up here and, you know, if I wanted to go in and do it that way. But um, I may not want to be so... Um, work so large, except for right at the top there where I'm trying to pull down those sh those highlights. But in areas like this here, what I'm interested in is um, the, the highlights through like in here, okay? And now one thing you'll notice is that we're back to having our shadows there because this this particular image doesn't have the the shadow information that we just finished doing before. So what I'll need to do is actually create a, a separate mask um, after I kind of solve the, the highlight issue here. So for instance, I can I could go in and um, just pick some of the highlights in here, maybe pull down this opacity. It's a bit strong at the moment. Um, trying to not do too much there, that's going to affect the shadows. But then Obviously, for these areas here, I want to paint back. So we were working on the Smart Filters mask. Now I'd have to go up to the Highlight Removal and add a new mask. And in here, then, I would be um, painting back in. So basically painting out the highlight layer so we can reveal the shadow removal layer underneath it. And, um, you know, that depends on how strong you need your control to be there. But... A little bit of a process. However, when you do it, you eventually do find that you get a result that's that's workable. Now, to help visualize this a little bit better, you know, even though this is fairly grayish, it's still not like true gray. So I find that working with a black and white uh, adjustment layer tends to help me better see where the highlights are and where the color variations are. So if I were, for instance, um, Kind of paint back on there, I could better see that the um, you know highlights seem a little bit bright there. Okay. And in in truth, um, I you know some of this information could be used as um, as a relief map, or it could just be used as a, a specular map, or it could be used as just a basis, and we could we could paint over this later with color. Um, we don't necessarily need to preserve this color. Um, you know, if we really wanted to, we could probably extract out most of that individual gray to kind of light brown color um, and project that over the top again later. So I'm very happy to leave it as just pure black and white because it's going to make it a lot easier to combine uh, the difference in color that we're going to find from you know different photos that some are one color versus another here. And black and white is going to be our nice sort of equalizer for that. Um, so taking a look at what this actually looks like when it's finished, um, actually, just before we do that, um, I will point out that there are some adjustments that I can make here on the black and white um, layer that will help to pull things up a, uh, up a bit. Like I can see here, the yellow pulls up the shadows a little bit there. Um, the if it doesn't, if it, if it doesn't look like it's doing anything, then I just like put it back to its default value. Um, but here, I'm just kind of playing around with it to see what it gives me, right? And so 
Um, this version here is sort of what I think is a, is a pretty good result. It's more worked on than what I was just doing as part of the tutorial as a quick example. Um, and for this, you can see that I've really pulled up the reds. Um, the yellows are around about the mid area, but the cyans have been pulled way down. And um, I'm gonna see what that actually changed. I'm not sure that the cyans were all that important. However, the blues were, I think, I think that has to do a little bit with um, some of the shadow details. Okay, and you can see definitely the yellows has have an effect on that, but we wanna make sure that we're not inadvertently adding back in um, you know, too much contrast here, where we sort of bring back in highlights or shadows where we don't we don't want to. Um, so this is, this is where I would keep it. And um, I, I would definitely save a version of this as a PSD file. And then I would say about a version of this uh, without layers. And so I would make, um, I would just go ahead and collapse all those layers by hitting control E and then save this as um, something like a, a TIFF file would be good. And so giving it, make sure the names are, are consistent between the two. Um, and now you have something that is a little bit more easy to use in some of the other software. And there you go. That's how you do it.